I just got stuck at a... <laughs> I almost gave this flower to a cute little Italian girl from Italy. Well, they live in Lyle, Illinois now, but I talked with this family from Italy um, while waiting at a bridge, which was like a party bridge. I hope I spliced that video in here too. Anyway, oh, <laughs> it was very strange. I guess it's Friday night, but South Haven. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of fun. I know it's a real small town and maybe that would get old after a while, the same way tourism gets old to a lot of people, but I also kind of liked it because it reminded me of the vibes in a big city where there's just a lot going on. It's like obviously not everybody's participating in the madness, but some people are and it's just kind of to each their own. I didn't like that some people were saying the F word a lot from their boats as the bridge was up. And so this sweet little Italian girl was like dancing and her mom, they were all speaking Italian for the longest time. And then I finally just asked like, where in Italy are you? Or what what country are you from? And then they said Italy and I'm like, oh, what, what town in Virginia or whatever. Yeah, they said near Venice. And anyway, we got talking about that. It was really fun. And he asked uh, the, the dad. Um, yeah, he was really sweet. I said I have two fans in Italy. <laughs> anyway, it was really cool. It was fun. Um, <laughs> simple things. And then another guy chimed in because he used to do business in Italy and I guess he had been in a bunch of the towns. So he chimed in, this older man. Um, and then we were all just talking at this bridge waiting for the boats to go by and it seemed like it distracted the little girl from Italy. So she had been like moaning loudly before I started talking with him like, ah, and I had wanted to give her this flower to make her feel better. And then I remembered, oh yeah, COVID and I'd had it in my mouth, <laughs> so, so I didn't give it to her. But um, yeah, talked with them for like 10 minutes while the party bridge was up. <laughs> and everybody was like going Meow! on their pontoon boats or sailboats or whatever, and like 30 boats went under this bridge and there's a really cute restaurant with lights and stuff. And it's probably just people drinking and doing crazy things and not even anything I'm that big of a supporter of because you just heard my last video where alcohol like silently, subtly kind of ruined my life through another person having a problem with it. But then again, I also called him an angel in that he helped me in other ways. So I think nothing's simple, everything's complex. We're on the path that we're on. There's no point resisting the path that you're on. Like you're on the path you're on and there are good things about the path you're on and there's no real point in looking back at other forks in the road that you didn't take you know, because why, what, what would change? Looking back on those wouldn't change anything. It wouldn't change your now. It might give you some understanding, which is why I did that so much for the last few hours. Kind of gave me some understanding of myself and like why I, oh wait, that doesn't help anything. Why I might've chosen what I chose there. Mm -hmm. But I would like to go to Hawaii again someday without somebody who was like unwilling to experience any joy. <laughs> No offense to him, but it was pretty sad to basically plan your own wedding. Ah! Oh, I guess I shouldn't talk about that. My, my bike almost fell over. <laughs> it's a sign! Don't give away all your secrets! Alright, bike life. Science is real. Black lives matter. No human is illegal. In case you didn't know, like think about it. Like if that's one that you struggle with, what that's saying is like, don't call a person illegal. They're not an, they're not an illegal. An, A-N, an illegal. Like if you wanna get all technical about whether or not somebody's here illegally, but even then you get into asylum. Like don't, I don't know. You probably are someone with similar beliefs as me, so you don't need this lecture. <laughs> anyway, continuing, love is love. I'm not even gonna get into that one. L-G-B-T-Q-I-A plus. Can't make a plus sign while holding my phone. There. Plus. You know? Support people. Why? What? What? How does it harm you to support people? Are you afraid that it will affect your kids? How does it harm your life and your beliefs to just kind of say like, okay, coexist. Even if you don't believe in it. Even if you think it's sin. There are probably other churches who are super fundamentalists who think that your church is a sin. Like it, I don't mean to just imply that all conservatives are Christians who are anti these values. I, I don't think the world is that simple either. Okay, continuing. Um, women's rights are human rights. 
kindness is everything. Yes, you know this thing. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, uh, I was going to tell her I was making a YouTube video, but I don't think she cared. Um, okay, that's my life. There's my eyes. I should really get back. That was the whole point. I was trying to get back before dark because I didn't bring my bike lights with me, but I'm kind of... Nope, none of them. I'm kind of just on very public roads, including a party bridge, party boat, and a cute little lit up tiki hut looking bar. And it's so weird because like, aren't we still supposed to be social distancing? This world feels like almost artificial right now. It feels almost like not like I don't believe in COVID. It's almost the opposite. I very much believe in it. I just think what we are witnessing now is like a version of mental illness. And I never use that word because I prefer to say like, I'm focusing on my mental wellness or I'm focusing on my mental health. And I don't talk about whether or not I do or don't have mental illness. Like that's a focus on the negative. That's why I don't believe in therapy. It basically creates mind pools like pools in people's mind where they get obsessively focused on their negative traits and the ways that they aren't doing well and then they can sometimes become like fixated in an almost like authority figure or authoritarian sort of way on their own therapist or their own books that have helped them or systems that have helped them and it's like that doesn't I don't know I can't I can't use that model I can't become dependent on a person who I'm gonna see once a week for an hour that doesn't give me enough to do in the time in between. So I just focus on mental health, not whether or not I have actual mental illness, but I'm sure I've recently I started calling myself neuro, neurodivergent and I think that's accurate. I don't know anybody like me who just wants to talk for 30 minutes, 60 minutes at a time to work out their thoughts. And my sister goes with me on it. Like she'll talk with me for hours and we will like really dissect some stuff. And my boyfriend will go with me sometimes, but not for the same length of time because he's not as much of a talker as she is or an or a, a analytic kind of thinker. Like I know he does by himself, but I don't think he gets much out of doing it for three hours with another person. <laughs> I dropped my sunglasses. All right, well, maybe that's another sign. <laughs> Bye.